All right, traders, it is time to prepare to trade the best setups at the best prices. We're gonna be doing an in-depth price action analysis on the SPY. This is gonna help you identify the bull and bear traps heading into the rest of this week. In terms of my trading day, the green streak has officially ended. I did end up having a very small red day. I lost about $2,000 on the day. I made three trades, two were very, very small losses. I got in and out, it went 30 cents against me, cut the loss, and then I had one small win. With that being said, I'm gonna be going over the mistakes that I ended up making today. Me personally, in terms of how SPY was trading, I found it to be very slow, very unattractive. I don't like slow type of price action, and I did not like the chop as well. So I decided to just call it for the day once the morning session was over. With that being said, I'll be sharing with you the mistakes that I ended up making. I will also be sharing with you the analysis that I ended up giving to my team, which was fairly accurate despite my small red day, and we had some people People have a phenomenal green day. Dimitri within the chat ended up making over $30,000 today. You can see it's live because it has SPY 24. He ended up making over $30,000 today. He made $17,000 on his call swing trade that he ended up swinging. He also ended up swing trading puts right before the close. We'll see how that does. Overall, I think he'll do well. But um, we had some people do fairly, fairly well um, despite the polls not being the best. You know, the polls are sitting in around 60% right now. Top G's polls um, are better in terms of today. He had a fairly good day, 62 green, 20 red. But with that being said, Let's break down the day and let's prepare for the new setups that are coming with the new bull and bear traps. So I'll be going over the analysis, the price action. This is going to help you become a better trader, how to read the charts. Let's get straight into it. So in terms of my analysis that I gave out to my team, this was posted last night and then I gave them a new update in the morning because things can change in the morning as well. But in terms of a brief summary on what was posted to them last night within the key levels, this is our trading plan. And I'm going to show you how I connect all this together. Um, I said, you know, I'm bullish. On the overall day, I said based off the daily chart and since it's gapping up, I'm seeing strong reasons to be bullish for tomorrow. I will keep you updated if things change. Um, best level to buy is at the gap fill level for 395.65. Other levels were interested in targeting call options, 394.50, right? So these were the overall levels that we were interested in terms of one of the main reasons why I was bullish. SPY was gapping up and not only was it gapping up, if you look at the overall trend, the overall trend says that it's bullish. Um, I'm going to show you. So look at this um, Look at this pattern on the daily chart, right? So in terms of this pattern, you could see SPY is trending down sideways. See how it's going down sideways? And then see like this bullish pin trend reversal candlestick. What happens the next day? The next day, it has a very, very nice green day. You see that? And then you could see it did the same thing um, right around here. So if we go to, let's see, if we go a little bit further back, I'll show you what it is that I'm looking at. Let's see. So um, you could just visually see it's trending down sideways. It has this like trend reversal candlestick on the daily chart. It gaps up and then it explodes up, right? So do you see how those two ovals, those two patterns that I pointed out looks identical to um, yesterday? It's trending sideways down. It has this trend reversal candlestick and then it explodes up and it's green and it's bullish. That's why I was overall bullish and I was interested in buying calls. The issue was it never hit my key level to buy calls, which is okay because one day it will hit that key level to buy calls and we will be able to trade the best sets of this prices. But that's why I told my team I'm overall bullish and I'm interested in buying into the other ugly dips and I gave them the levels. Unfortunately, the, the levels never, never hit. Um, in terms of my pre-market update, right before I told them um, in the pre-market, I told them the most likable outcome is that we crash at the market open to start to fill the gap. That's what I told them. And that was fairly accurate, but we did not fill the gap, but there was great opportunities for puts. And I said the best level for puts is the pre-market highs at 399.80. As you could see, 399.80 was literally the top at one point. It topped out at um, $400, right? I ended up playing puts below my plan at 399.50 towards the lows on this dip. It went to 400. I continued to hold and it kept spiking to 400. I decided to add and then on this rip right here to 420, it dropped back to 400 and I said enough is enough. This is slow. This is choppy. This is not ideal for me. I don't like the price action. I'm going to cut my loss. Then after that, I traded puts one more time, had a small win. Then after that, I traded puts one last time and had a small win. And then my update from there in terms of the team and what I told them within the spy floor is I told them, you guys know I'm overall bullish on the day. That's what I said in my analysis. And what I told them was, if you are in 
puts, the same pattern on the 30 minute chart is beginning to repeat. So you're gonna wanna look to take your profits in the 398 range, which was the exact low. And Will, what's this pattern that you're talking about that you saw repeating on the 30 minute? The pattern was, it was doing the same thing it did yesterday. It was just slower, like the complete opposite of like an FOMC day. It was very, very slow and it was very, very choppy and it wasn't volatile. Um, I've noticed for me, um, I like volatility, but I don't like too high of a volatility with FOMC. It could just be a little too hectic, but I do thrive in volatility, but it can be dangerous if it's too hectic. Now, if something's too, too slow, I don't do very well as well. So for me, I like the perfect balance between um, some decent volatility, but not too much volatility. And today was just one of those very slow days where it just wasn't for me, but this was the overall pattern. See how SPY gapped up yesterday? See how SPY gapped up? Um, see how SPY gapped up right here? Um, on you know March 27th and then see how it gapped up today, right? Same pattern. Look at the 30 minute chart. It's doing the same thing. It's forming bearish candlesticks on the 30 minute. It's forming bearish candlesticks on the 30 minute. What happens when it forms that first trend reversal bearish candlestick on the 30 minute? It starts to drop and it starts to fill the gap below. And it did start to drop and it did start to crash but it never filled the gap below. And one of the reasons why I gave them that update as this was crashing was that it's likely going to um, reverse and bottom towards 398, and you're gonna wanna take your profits on puts, is um, because of the daily chart pattern. I told you guys the daily chart pattern was gonna be bullish and I was gonna try to sh close um, strong, right? With an analysis, so that was one of the reasons. And then I realized it was moving too slow to fill the gap. It's very unrealistic for it to fill the gap if it's gonna try to close strong with the bullish pattern, if it's moving that slow. And um, this was another reason, right? I was looking at this overall move right here and I was saying it looks very, very similar to these two days. Right here, um, it forms the bearish candlestick, it forms the bearish candlestick, it starts to drop, a little it starts to drop a little then it reverses then it reverses right and i no longer was expecting that reversal to be at the gap because it was moving too slow to fill the gap right it was just too late on to the day where it was unrealistic for the gap to fill so one of the reasons why i said it's likely going to reverse and bottom at 398 not only because of the bullish trend reversal pattern that i showed you guys on the daily chart in the beginning of this video that i mentioned in my analysis but this was another reason this is um previous resistance right your previous resistance is sitting towards um, $399 to $398.20, $398.20. This is your previous resistance zone. Since the SPY had a gap up and a breakout above previous resistance, it's gonna try to reverse and react to support initially. And since it's moving very, very slow into the day and we were expecting a bullish reversal, it's very unlikely that it's gonna fill the gap because it has to reverse at some point. And if it's not gonna reverse at this gap, since it's moving too slow, it's gonna reverse at the previous breakout resistance level, which is in between 399 to 39820. That's how we figured out, right? That's how we came um, up with that situation. And I made it very, very clear to take profits in um, puts, right? Because in the morning we wore bearish and we wore hitting puts towards um, $399.50 to $400. Um, I didn't like the price action. So I got stopped out, took my loss. Then I made another trade, had a nice little win. Then I made another trade, had a small loss. And I said, okay, enough is enough. This just isn't working out for me. I don't like the price action and normally doesn't move this slow. I'm just gonna walk away and call it. I don't wanna continue to try and lose, right? Um, but in terms of another indication that it could have, you know, bottomed towards that level, pre-market lows. Pre-market lows were very, very strong support at 398.65. This is where the bear trap was created in the pre-market for a nice move to 400. So if you see it bottoming at pre-market support, and then it breaks above resistance. Your resistance is at 399.15. It breaks above. That's the new floor. That means that the trend is shifting from being bearish to bullish because previous resistance is no longer reacting as a resistance. It's breaking out and reacting as a support. That's how you can identify when the trend is actually shifting and that it's really not going to go back to fill that gap below, right? So those are some tips. Those are some trips that I... Um, those are some tips and tricks that I can give you. And that's how we overall read the market today. Me personally, I tried to capitalize off of the puts and shorting at the gap. If I would have held a little longer, I would have made some nice money, um, but I didn't like the price action. I respected it. It went 30 cents against me. I cut my loss quick, right? When I say it went 30 cents against me, not my contracts, the price and spy. 
I bought puts at 399.50. It went to 400. I added my average was 399.70 and it went back to 400. I cut my loss, very, very small loss. And then I played puts again as it was going down. Had a nice little win, 20 cents in my favor, still down on the day. Then I played puts one last time towards support, got squeezed out. It went 30 cents against me, cut my loss within minutes. And then I said, okay, enough is enough. I'm going to call it for the day. I'm not feeling the slow price action. I told people to take your profits on puts. And I told them the most likable outcome is we're going to reverse in the 398 range, which is exactly what happening, right? I tried to capitalize on puts. It just wasn't working out for me due to the price action and not getting hundred percent the best entries and just not liking the chop and the slowness. And then, um, in terms of the call theory, I just didn't want to trade. I didn't like the price action. If I don't like the price action, I'm not going to trade. Even if I have a solid plan, I'm just going to sit on the sidelines. This is something that is not appealing or attractive to me. And I completely understand people had, some people had very, very nice green days. They did very, very well. Um, Dimitri, ended up swing trading call options. He ended up making over $17,000 on those call options. You can see SPY24 is a live account. And then he continued to day trade and he flipped that 17K profit into a $31,000 profit, right? So big shout out to him. He had a phenomenal day and Top G had a great day as well. These guys are absolutely crushing it. Big shout out to um, Bobby. Bobby was at SeaWorld banking today on um, you know puts and stuff like that. He was doing fairly well as well. Big shout out to Greg. His consistency is absolutely phenomenal. So um, yeah, that's the overall move. That's the overall play. Um, give me one second, guys. I'm using a wireless mouse and um, my mouse just died. So I'm going to go plug it in really quick. Okay, so now that we went over that, what am I seeing for tomorrow? So in terms of what we're seeing for tomorrow, um, Dimitri ended up swing trading puts. I think he's going to likely um, be right on that. But um, overall, I'm seeing some potential chop. I'm not seeing 100% the best day to be trading but I am seeing a key level where a major bull trap was created. We had a very, very nice bull trap created with big downside potential, which is big upside potential for put options at 402.50. Very nice downside potential. So um, if we see resistance forming at 401.35, I'm gonna be targeting puts in between the range of 401.35 to 402.50 tomorrow, and I will look to scale out at $400. That's my overall trading plan. That's my overall setup. If it goes back to um, 398.20, they will try to bounce it. So basically what I'm seeing for tomorrow is I'm seeing an opportunity for put options in between the range of 402.50 to 401.35. And then in terms of call options, I'm seeing two opportunities. I'm seeing an opportunity for calls at $398 towards this support to sell at 399. And then I'm seeing an opportunity for calls again at 395.60 whenever it wants to drop back down to 395.60, right? So in terms of the put play, it's um, we're looking to short resistance for a bull trap towards 402.50 to 401.35, scale out at $400, previous resistance, gonna try to react to support, take our gains. And then in terms of the, that was the put plays, in terms of the call plays, 398 support, quick scalp back to 399, will likely reject. And then um, another call play, at 395.60. That's overall what it is that I'm seeing today in terms of like what those strategies actually are. 395.60 is um, previous um, previous bear trap level, previous resistance. Since it had a massive gap up and a massive breakout, when it comes back down to the gap, it's going to try to reverse and react to support. So this is a very attractive level to be buying calls at 395.60. Um, $398 is previous resistance. We'll likely see one more bounce there when it drops back down. So I'll be targeting that as well. That is not the best setup at the best price. That's a lot of trade. Best setup, best price is calls at 395.60. This is your middle for a quick scalp, maybe back to 399. If 399 reacts as a resistance, I'll have to have bounce. Then it's going to continue to get crushed and drop, three, drop into 399 to fill the, 398 to fill the gap. And then I'm seeing a potential um, bull trap where it goes to 40250 to 4135 and we hit puts in between that zone. That's the overall plays. Now, what you need to understand is if 4135 reacts to support, we go to 40250. Um, really couldn't, it's really, really can't see this going much higher than that based off the last time it did this, right? So if you look at this pattern, right, it gaps up, it bottoms out early and then it pushes higher. It gaps up, it bottoms out early, then it pushes higher. If you look at what happened the next day, the next day it gapped down and then, um, it filled the gap and then it went a little bit higher and then it reversed back to go lower. And then FOMC came out, it went higher, and then it dropped. I could see something similar happening where it gaps down and um, Dimitri ended up swing trading those puts for a reason. He's likely gonna be right. And then it goes back to fill the gap, pushes a little higher, and then it sells off again. 
that's my overall thesis for tomorrow in terms of well, well if it pushes higher above the gap at 401.35 after it gaps down what level are we going to be targeting those puts we're going to be targeting those puts at um 450 to 40250 ideally 40250 so that's the overall game plan man if this gaps down you could try a starter position at the gap at 41.35 best entry is going to be 402.50 that's where i'm going to look to hit puts heavy is at 402.50 and it will likely go lower within to the day and then try to spike back and recover like it did later on today very very simple day um for the most part I'm um, likely going to be avoiding calls. Now, if I see it's slow and I see a strong reversal day, I will look to calls at 398. So remember, if this pattern repeats itself, it gaps down, it pushes above the gap, it sells off lower, and then it reverses. And then in terms of where it reverses and starts spiking is going to be um, likely this 398 level. And then in terms of where the top is, it's going to likely be this 40250 level to 4135 range. That's my overall thoughts. That's my overall analysis. If you do want to be a part of Traders Society, it's going to be the first link down below in the description. It is a one-time fee. It is lifetime access. You will learn how to master the spy. You will learn how to master trading and scalping options. You will surround yourself with multiple traders within the chat room who are consistently making five figures daily now. If you want to be a part of this networking opportunity, if you want to get access to the course, the trading system, the video lesson library, and everything that, is that I've taught and know within the market, if you want to get access to the Discord server, the live Live trading voice the live trading stream the chat i'm telling you guys people within the chat um despite us not having the best polls today due to the slow overall day we had some people hit very very big today dimitri made over 30 grand we had a lot of big hitters within the chat and big shout out to them if you want to surround yourself with that network and with that guidance and mentorship it's going to be the first link down below in the description as soon as you join you get lifetime access we will be raising the price very very soon likely on april 1st the price will be raised so now's the best time to join it's a one-time phoenix lifetime access i'll see you guys tomorrow live at market open tomorrow should be a much better day for us we have a solid plan set up and i will see you guys till then